Could a dream destination disappear over the horizon for hundreds of thousands of British holidaymakers thanks to a new tax rise? We are disappointed. We see it as a slap in the face of the Caribbean. Also in this week's programme... Outdoor concerts, street parties and even packs of barking dogs. There's a lot of noise coming up on Insider Guide. And... I go to New Zealand's North Island to try blackwater rafting in those caves. Hello and welcome to Fast Track, I'm Rajan Datta. Now this year is going to be a big one for Jamaica. In August it will mark the 50th anniversary of the day the Union Jack was lowered for the last time and the island won its independence from its former colonial ruler, Britain. So why then, some say, is Britain threatening to weaken that relationship by increasing the cost of travelling between the two countries? Nick Davis now reports from Kingston. <laughs> It's high season here, the beaches full of holiday makers getting some sun. The weather conditions are perfect, but there's a storm brewing over the island. For British holiday makers, the cost of getting away from it all is going up. Air passenger duty is just one of the taxes placed on flights out of the UK and was originally introduced for environmental reasons. But now a cash-strapped UK government has decided to put the APV tax up by around 8% from April and the Caribbean is expected to be hit hard. It is a, a total negation of, of, of colonial history, of, of responsibility that is there and of the fact that many of our people have helped to build the economies of the United Kingdom. There's been a 16% drop in arrivals from the UK over the past five years, and fewer visitors equals lower occupancy in the hotel rooms. It's a knock-on effect that's felt throughout the entire economy of these islands. The Caribbean is the most tourism-dependent region on Earth. Uh, pretty close to 40% of the uh, foreign exchange generated in the region is from tourism. The APD was introduced in 1994, but in the last few years, the government here and the travel industry have been lobbying hard to get Britain to, as they see it, level the playing field. Edmund Bartlett was until recently tourism minister in Jamaica and campaigned for years for a change. We are disappointed. We see it as a slap in the face of the Caribbean. We felt that there is a level of equity that could be brought in the whole uh, configuration of the banding to allow for the United States and ourselves in the Caribbean to, to be uh, at the same level, uh, within the same band. Because we measure the distance by capitals, um, people who are in Hawaii, which is almost one and a half times the distance from Kingston to, to London, would be in a, a, a better band, a more advantageous band. And therefore, the rate applied to visitors coming to them would be lower than ours. Hotels have been discounting heavily since the start of the economic crisis to keep occupancy high. But despite lower room rates, the increase in the APD for British holiday makers in April means that prices for families are going up. It's a very clear indication that families with children and, and larger families are just not able to travel because it puts it out of reach for them to buy the ticket. If you look at it, it's an average of, a, of 75 pounds per ticket, which is going to go up to 83 pounds per ticket in economy. Now it's twice as much in the premium class and it's just a lot of money. The rise is justified, say the government. A Treasury spokesperson said to us, the government has always said that the aviation sector must play its part in reducing the deficit and restoring the public finances. We took action for air passengers and airlines at last year's budget by freezing air passenger duty for 2011, postponing an APD rise until April 2012. 
As announced at the autumn statement, we're also extending APD to private business jets for the first time. Critics say that the air passenger deed is destroying the very lifeblood of the Caribbean. Tourism is one of the major sources of income revenue in these islands, and without it, people are suffering. Now, here in Jamaica, the country's actively looking to new markets, looking for passengers in Latin America and China as a way of bringing in more customers. The inaugural flight of the Panamanian airline Copa to Montego Bay, just another part of the drive to get more visitors from other parts of the world. Governments around the region are looking south rather than to the US and Canada for future growth. Encouraging changes in visa restrictions and engaging with Latin America seems to be the new business model. Sandals are the best known hotel group in the region and with their all-inclusive resort packages are one of the largest employers in the Caribbean. We have recently set up an office in Brazil. Uh, we have representation in Mexico, in Colombia, in Peru, uh, uh, Chile and Argentina are about to come on the map. We're looking, we're looking in, into, into South America where you get a, you get a nation like, uh, like, like Brazil that's doing so well. Um, that's not that far away, all things considered, from, from Jamaica and the Caribbean, so it's, it's definitely a part of our roadmap going forward. The cost of flights between the Caribbean and its traditional tourist market in the UK also has another dimension here. Jamaica has a population of close to 3 million people, but there's a similar number of Jamaicans who live outside the island in the diaspora. For many of them, the increase in APD could make visiting family back in the UK just too expensive. Randy Lewis runs a small printing business in Kingston, along with her husband Jeff, who's British, and both have family in London. It's practically impossible right now. Um, what with all the expenses that we have, we can't actually afford to take a vacation, take a family vacation, go to the UK um, to visit family or friends or anything like that. It's just too expensive. Those against the APD in the region say that the British government have the right to impose whatever taxes they choose. However, the impact of the duty on the region is one that they say discriminates against them. But they'll continue to campaign for a change. Their livelihoods depend on it. Nick Davis there reporting from Jamaica. Well, if you're watching us from there or elsewhere in the Caribbean, We'd like to know what you think about that hike in air passenger duty. Last week, we asked whether you'd be put off visiting the UK because of air passenger duty. It was a subject that got many of you talking. David Hardy from Canada got in touch to say he wouldn't be travelling to visit family in the UK because of the extra charges. The taxes are three times the amount of the price of an economy ticket. There is one offer of $49 for a ticket from Toronto, but it costs over $510 in taxes. Brett from South Africa says he's altered his holiday plans because of the high price of travel. Last year we went to Ireland instead, where we did not need a visa and prices are more reasonable. Richard Cornblith from California got in touch to say he's flying into Europe via other airports. I used to come to London at least once a year, but since the airport fees at Heathrow increased to nearly 25% of the total ticket price, my wife and I abandoned London as a destination. We now routinely fly to Brussels or Frankfurt to access Europe. It's sad because we love the UK and would be prepared to return to London if the fees were reduced to a reasonable level. But Verena from Switzerland says APD won't stop her visiting. Nothing can and will ever prevent me from going to and enjoying myself in London, the most smashing city in the world. Thanks as ever for all your emails. Please keep them coming to our usual address, fasttrack at bbc.com, or sign up to our Facebook page, and the address is on your screens now. Time now, though, for a roundup of this week's other top stories. 
Almost a third of Airbus A380s have been called in for urgent inspections after cracks were found inside some of the wings. The decision affects aircraft that have flown more than 1,300 journeys. Airbus says the cracks are not an immediate threat to safety and will repair any it finds. A six-mile walkway over the Amazon jungle is being planned. The $10 million project will give a bird's-eye view of the jungle canopy and also act as a research base for scientists. The plan by a charitable trust and British architects is to build the structure in an isolated area of northeastern Brazil. And Tel Aviv in Israel has been named the most popular destination for gay travellers by an online poll. It won 43% of the vote, beating off competition from New York and Toronto, which came second and third. We'll stay with us here on Fast Track, because coming up after the break... We're off to Alaska for a spot of dog sledging. Plus, we descend 90 metres into a dark black hole in New Zealand. Why on earth would anybody want to do that?